Recent headlines have been dominated by uh, shortcomings in the Pebble Bed Modular Reactor project. It just became too expensive, as Lumkila said earlier on, for government and ESCOM to continue with that project and it's stalled. Subsequently, government's talking about going another way in terms of building nuclear uh, plants and they're talking about nuclear one. It seems as though there's a political will, but there's a financial strain. Yes, I actually did a small consulting job for Pebble Bed a few years ago and one of the things I uh, recognized then and uh, I think I've been vindicated was that it should have actually long ago been floated on international stock exchanges and sought international finance and quite why we uh, wanted to finance it exclusively locally uh, I, I never quite understood. I don't think it was a good idea then and uh, that's now clearly the case. So. Uh, the fact that government uh, is not putting uh, that much more money in, it's already put a lot, eight and a half billion or so, uh, I think is correct and I think it's correct that we should actually turn it into a proper business venture with serious investors. All right, so as serious investors consider the options of uh, coming into the nuclear space, and it's quite expensive, Leon. I mean, the cost for Pebble Bed had gone up annually by about one billion for the government. So it's something that the investor must consider. But it's also within the context of uh, an expansion drive by ESCOM, as ESCOM also looks for all sorts of funding options for its energy provision needs. Is it prudent for us to be going the nuclear route? when we should be trying to get our national utility working at optimum level and directing as much funding as possible towards that venture? Yes, I'm not sure that that's the solution, by the way. I think the ESCOM is a victim of the National Energy Regulator, NERSA. ESCOM has been discouraged f from investing and, and it's been discouraged by being told that a third of the market or so uh, would be in the hands of competitors, which is a good idea, but NERSA effectively blocked that. Uh, and so I would like to see ESCOM and the market fully uh, liberated from uh, regulation <coughs> so that uh, ESCOM can uh, compete effectively. It's got a lot of capital it already has, obviously gives it a big advantage. Right. Uh, but it's really time we in South Africa joined the rest of the world. This model of a giant energy uh, entity like right. ESCOM is, is simply no longer applies in the world. We're right. out of step. It's what I call an apartheid era dinosaur. Right. That's not ESCOM's fault. ESCOM is a victim. Uh, but we really need to unbundle right. the electricity. We need to separate the grid from the, from the generation. Right. We need to have uh, unbundle generation right. into different types of generation, right. hydro, nuclear, coal, uh, renewable. Okay. Okay. Now, in France, 75% of their electricity uh, comes from uh, nuclear sources. It's feasible and viable there. Would the same model work in South Africa? Absolutely. Uh, one of the reasons I'm for it is because I'm an environmentalist. Uh, I hate the thought of, uh, you know, thousands of acres of wind farms with cables and wires and power lines back and forth. Uh, it's an extremely environmentally mm -hmm. unfriendly option, strangely enough. And, uh, People for some reason think it's environmentally friendly. Nuclear is by far the most environmentally friendly form of energy and uh, it's increasingly competitive uh, for technological and economic reasons. Okay, now energy contributes about 15% to South Africa's GDP. We're battling to get financing for the utility um, and we're concerned about uh, power supply in the years to come, as, as early as 2013. As we talk about nuclear options, and we talk about floating projects like Kuburg to the uh, liberated market for investors to decide on how to pursue that project. What sort of partnerships can be formed? People talk about PPPs. What sort of partnerships can be formed with the state in terms of energy provision, but leaving the devices to the market as just that? Well, I mean, uh uh, Leon has just pointed out the issue around uh, the deregulation. Um, and it's quite clear to us that perhaps where the state can play a bigger role uh, is in terms of owning the infrastructure that is distribution. So NERSA could be given the infrastructure so that the generators can pay a user fee and or an access fee to that. And then at generation, as well as distribution, you've got competitors. Um, and that will ensure the security that, you, that you're asking. However, we know that um, in South Africa, that mindset is not yet there. So I think it's something that you need to engage and talk about it as we're doing now, because the state can't afford uh, supporting these, these companies. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully that mindset is gonna be changing given the economic realities. Um, and therefore that mix can right. only come also from, from alternatives, not only from thermal uh, right. generation.
Do you want to comment on that? Yes, I should just make the point that, you know, people think you know, the pebble bed investment was big, but it's costing the country, if you have unreliable energy, over a billion a year. Sure. So uh, uh, the one estimate is it's already cost three and a half billion just to have unreliable energy. Yeah. So uh, anything that can make it, the, the bad, inadequate energy is an extreme imposition on an economy. So we have to do what we can as quickly as we can. Uh, to bring about reliable and adequate energy. Just very briefly, we know that um, we're going to be facing tariff hikes as South Africans, but we're also told that South Africans have always paid the cheapest electricity because it's been subsidized by the state. In terms of incentivizing investment for independent power producers in the sector who will be putting in a lot of money for the, for the infrastructure, but are not getting it back by way of what consumers pay, uh, would there be an incentive to go into Yes, that's a complex thing. You know, to an economist, people like Nkile, there is no such thing ever as a shortage. There's just a wrong price. Mm. So the simple way to solve any shortage is raise the price to the market clearing rate. Now, in energy, of course, that would be such a huge hike, it would be intolerable to the economy. So we have to find a, a, a minimal, painful way of mm. doing that. But in the end, you have to have a price that is commensurate with the interests of investors. Okay. Uh, and we've probably erred, like maybe France and a few others have erred, who also claim to have okay. the cheapest energy in the world, by keeping the price too low. Right. And that, as I say, w is where Eskom has been a victim. Mm. Uh, and many people think it's a cause of the problem. It's actually the victim. It's a, it's a symptom of the problem of artificially low prices.